Hey developers, so today we are looking at Vue.js 3 and more specifically the composition API. We're gonna do a quick and simple example using it. And so I think it'll help really explain how the composition API works and some of the things that you can do with it. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I'm also the author of a few books and I'm a big fan of Vue, but I also really like JavaScript in general. Also like some backend languages like Node and Java and uh, all those sorts of things. If you guys like those type of videos, make sure you click that subscribe button below and make sure you click that like button and tell me what you think about this video, leave a comment too. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right into it and I'll show you what we're building here. So this, this right here is a very simple app. What we're gonna do is you're gonna put your a username in there, a GitHub username. So for example, mine is Eric CH, but if you wanted to, you can put any name in here. You're gonna click this press me button and it's just gonna display the number of repos that user has. So I'm using the GitHub API, if you don't know, there's an api.github.com and it allows you to do a whole bunch of things. So since we're keeping this example really simple, I wanted to show you uh, just how it would look if we wanted to just grab the name of all the repos and then display them. And by the way, it kind of looks like this after you click the button, it just lists the repos. All right, so I went ahead and already started an app for us. So just to save a little bit of time, I'm using the latest version of Vue CLI as the recording of this video to create this app. So this is actually, if you look in the package JSON file, I'm using Vue 3. So I'm using the latest version of Vue 3, which is believe at the time this recording is still a release candidate. They are very, very shortly actually releasing the full version of Vue. So that is really exciting and cool. One thing you can realize since um, if you know anything about Vue, you know that in the older versions of Vue with Vue 2, you had to have like one simple, um, actually like a, an opening and closing div inside our template inside here, because we had to have only one root node or root element. But since we're using Vue 3, you can, hear, you can see here we have this div and we also have this UL. So you can see definitely this is Vue 3. And by the way, I am using VS Code for these examples. And uh, just to get started, I deleted out all the cruft and the hello world out of this app. I just created it from scratch using Vue CLI. And all I have is one component. It's the app view component. And I'm using Tailwind to just add a little bit of styling. So you can see here I have font medium, enter GitHub username and a button. And so that's where we're starting off. So right now you click it, you type stuff, but nothing really happens. So let's say we wanted to add in a simple example of using an API. We're gonna use GitHub's API to fetch the repositories. Now there's definitely a few ways we can do this, but since we're gonna be using the, the uh, composition API, we'll obviously need to add in a setup component. So the first thing you need to do is add in this setup. And this is where we can do things like put in our computed properties. We can define all our properties. If you remember in Vue 2, you usually have this data object that you have to put everything in. But since we're using the composition API, we don't need to do that. Um, so what we're gonna do first is I wanna add in this input here. I'm gonna add in a V model to it. And I'm just gonna call it name. And then in the setup function, I'm gonna create this name inside here. So I'm gonna call it name, I'm gonna use something called ref. So I'm gonna to have to import that in. So I'm gonna import in ref, and that's gonna be imported in from view. And what this ref is, is basically it makes it kind of a reactive property that we can use throughout our, our app, or throughout our component that is. And the way the setup function works is we can use this return function and then we can just return what we want inside of it. So we're just gonna return name. So that's all we need to do now to connect this V model, which is, by the way, if you forgot, it's a way to do two-way data binding in Vue.js with uh, our new composition API using this setup function. Now, if you look here and I just put in name and save it, as I type here, you can see the name is being updated. You can see that, right? Yep, the name is being updated in real time because it's two-way data bound and it's connected to our setup function. So first, obviously we know that that's working. A uh, second one what I kind of want to do is I don't want it to update every time. Well, essentially what I want to do is I want this button to trigger a, a way of it connecting to our 
um, API to grab the information. Now there's a couple of ways to do this. Uh, the one way you may be thinking is we can just add in a methods, like a methods call, and that would work. But one thing I kind of want to show you is, if you remember in view, there's something called watchers, but we can have a watch on our API call that will update whenever this name, uh, basically whenever we champ a name in here, we press me, we hit this press me, and we go ahead and fetch the data. So uh, let me explain that. Let me show it to you, and it'll be a little bit simpler to understand. So I already have this name in here. So what I'm going to create is a new one called new name. And the reason I want to do this is basically this is going to be uh, what we're going to put our watcher to 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 uh, update anytime this new name changes. And so in this one here, this press me here, I'm going to add a click. And what I want to do is I want to set new name to name. And remember, since we are using a new variable, you always have to return it inside the setup function and you always return it as an object. Cool, so now um, this button, if we add in, we have this name in here, we add in new name, just to see what it looks like. New name, and by the way, my keyboard's a little clicky. I'm sorry about that. If you put an ABC here, you can see here, new name is nothing, but when I hit press me, the new name is still not updating. Oops, I see what I have in error here. I have too many L's. Let me try that again. Refresh it. I'll put in E-R-I-K. Cool, you can see now this new name updated with it as well. So now they're both the same, which is really cool. Um, by the way, before we get too far, I just want to have a quick shout out. Uh, I actually have a view three comprehensive workshop. I'm really proud of this. This is going. This is a three hour workshop I'm doing next Thursday, September 24th. If you like to learn more about it, I'll put a link in the description below. Just go ahead and click on it. You can click enroll now. I'm going to be going over everything you know about uh, the composition API and much more. It also helps out the channel. So yeah, so check out this new uh, live workshop. It's at viewcourse.viewcourse.tech slash workshop, and also will be the link in the description. So just a quick shout out for that. All right, so now we kind of see that we have this name and new name here, and uh, they both get updated. So the next thing we need to do is we're gonna add a watch function to actually connect to the API and list things out. So I'm gonna add in here, I'm import in watch, and this watch, basically has an arrow function, has a callback here that gets uh, um, taken care of here. And what the way this works is anytime any variables inside the watch that are reactive change, the watch updates again. So, to, so if we wanted to, we can do something like this. We could do a fetch, and I'm gonna just copy and paste this from my other screen so I get the uh, syntax right here. The URL wrote right, that is. Um, so what this is saying is we're going to do a fetch of this API user's new name repos. And this new name is a reactive, uh, a reference, a reactive property. And by the way, since we did ref, we have to do dot value. That kind of dereferences it for us to get, get the information we need. And then uh, we need to do a few other things. So if you understand fetch, you have a, it's a venable and you get a response from it. And we have to then get a JSON. And then from there, we do another then, and this will get our data. This will get our data object. And this is where we can do a lot of stuff. So let's just make sure it's working. And we can take a look in our console. So now anytime this new name changes, it should automatically uh, go in and try to do this fetch. By the way, just in case, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make sure there's actually a value in there before we do the fetch. Otherwise, it'll try to fetch with no information and that doesn't make sense. So this uh, new name dot value has to uh, exist. So I'm gonna open up the console here and inspect it. And I think you guys can see this, let me see. Yeah, I think you could see it. And if I put in, let's say Eric here, Eric CH is my GitHub username, I click press me. Okay, so I see I have data F JSON here. So looks like it's it is retrieving something, which is good. Um, uh, let me see. Look. Let me look at the network tab. 
Okay, so here, see repos, here's a response. Cool, so I am getting information. It looks like it is uh, grabbing it. So great. So to get this working, I, I want to make sure I add one more thing and I'm gonna add in a state. And this is gonna be, this is gonna hold some information about the actual state of the app. And I could use a reference, but I kinda wanna show you reactive too. And the reason I use reactive here and this is another option inside view. It's another way to create like a reactive variable, kind of like a ref. But the way, I, the reason I like it is it's really great if you're gonna have like a object of data. In this case, I'm gonna use an object and I'm just gonna set a default value of, of nothing there, of basically an empty array. And then what I can do is I'm gonna do state.data and that's gonna equal the data that's being returned. And I'm also going to clear out the name value so it kind of disappears from there. And if I think I got this right, that should be it. Uh, obviously I'll need to return the data. Actually, what I'm gonna do here is instead of returning the data, I wanna actually return, um, there's this thing called two refs, which is a way to take uh, data that, that it's a way to kind of like unravel uh, reactive data. So since we know we have this this uh, data object called state, we can do two ref state here. And then that way we'll expose this data object to our template. And now we can just uh, see if this works. Um, I'm gonna do li here. And yeah, there's a couple ways of doing this li. I think um, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna do a v4 on it. v4, we're gonna do lib in data. And then we have to add a key, which is always, I don't know, lab.name. And then this will be lab.name, if I can spell right. Okay, so now this is information that should be working. Now we'll check my console, I don't have any errors. Oops, I found a bug here. Actually, I need to do response JSON like this. And now it should work. So let's see here. Uh, if I go back up here and I type in Eric CH, press me. Cool. So now we have all our, all our, actually, basically the first 30, they have rate limiting for the GitHub API, but it's basically the first 30 repositories that I have inside here listed. And if I change this to, I don't know, Eric and press, yep, cool. So now I'm getting the 30 values here. And by the way, I can change this name value equals blank. So it actually resets it. So let's try it again. Let's try Eric. Cool. That's not my repository, by the way. Uh, a mini rant, rant for a second. I have used the name Eric my whole life. I was born with it. But every single service ever, the Eric name just disappears quickly. Someone took Eric. I signed up for Twitter in like literally six months after it was created. Uh, maybe a year, year and a half, maybe. And someone already took uh, the... Twitter handle for Eric and someone had took the Twitter handle for Eric for GitHub. I never get it. So I'm always Eric CH. So if you ever go online and you're looking for my stuff, look for E-R-I-K-C-H. I'm with Eric with a K, which is a little more unusual than Eric with a C. So keep that in mind. So cool. So I, now we have done it. So we have this really simple uh, composition API using our setup hook, using this name, new name state. Anytime now, since we have this watch on this function here, anytime this na new name changes, this fetch will get re basically uh, fetched again. And then we are updating our reactive objects and this is automatically uh, changing our lib here and are changing the repos, which is really cool. And I can hit press me and it does it again. By the way, typically uh, for this is easy, this is fine for an example, but if I wanted to, like I would probably surround this in a form input and then um, look for anytime someone hits enter and actually submit the form correctly. But just for a simple example like this, this works. All right, so I hope you guys learned a little bit about creating a very, very simple composition API using reactive, using refs and reactive. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and also make sure you check out course.viewcourse.tech slash workshop for my new View 3 workshop. Really love to see some of you guys there. I appreciate it. Thanks.